الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل اذا سجى ما وضعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث وقال الله تعالى في مقام الآخر ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وانتم الاعلون ان كنتم مؤمنين وقال الصحابه رضوان الله عليهم اجمعين يا رسول الله ما نقول عند الحزن قال النبي قل اللهم استرنا اللهم استر اوراتنا وامن روعتنا صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين My respected elders, brothers and sisters and listeners of Radio Dawn Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh A saintly man with his disciples is going to Hajj and is crossing the Red Sea from Egypt to Jeddah. And anybody who knows geography knows very well that Red Sea is a closed, straight, and not a very easy sea to cross. Winds aren't that fast there. However, this great man with his marids and his students wants to do the Hajj. Zil Hajja is approaching and he's stuck in the middle of the Red Sea. The captain is a Christian and he keeps on jeering him, mocking him and saying, you know, you're such a great saint. Everybody calls you Abu Hassan al-Shazali, al-Sufi, al-Murabit, al-Mujahid and so many other titles you have to your acclaim. Do something. We're stuck here. I've been here for weeks. Of course, he's worried about his business. He's supposed to bring people from Jeddah back to uh, Egypt. And the great sheikh listens to these jibes. And he too is, of course, worried. And as you remember, last week we were talking about worry. That we worry a lot most of us, and our worries are usually unfounded. So, you know, research shows that 40% of our worries really are things that will never happen. 30% are to do with the past anyway. 12% are to do with other people's businesses that we worry about for no reason. And there's only the possibility about 8% likelihood that something will happen that you worry about. And this is a very serious mental problem, really. And it's a mental problem for everybody. It's not just for some people. It really is a very serious mental problem. And it's a problem that the Quran keeps on reminding us that we need to tackle. Because if you don't tackle this problem, you are not really going to do what you ought to be doing, which is getting on with the business of life, and getting on with doing righteousness, remembering your Lord, and being that creative being that you are supposed to be. Because your energies, mental energies, intellectual energies, are all going to be paralyzed and stifled by this unfounded worry. You see, our minds are very powerful. And once they go onto the wrong track, and in the, in, in the search of wrong ideas, they will go on digging up all sorts of things, and I know many of you here, and myself included in that. 
when we, go to, when we worry, it goes on and on and on. Psychologists also teach us about how to disengage from this, this biological problem that we have, how to disengage from it. And the glorious Quran too is full of those teachings that help us to disengage ourselves and our minds from these worries. So when Abu Hassan al-Shazli, this great scholar, this great Sufi and this great teacher is stuck in the middle of Red Sea and Hajj is about to come and he could miss his Hajj, what does he do? After listening to those jibes and seeing this, he too is worried. He sleeps. In his dream, he says, and he sees the Prophet sallallahu who gives him the good news that he's going to be freed soon. But what he does is, he teaches him a very powerful dua as well. And in that dua, he says, Ya Allah, Ya Ali, Ya Azim, Ya Halim, Anta, Rabbi, Wa ilmuka hasbi, Fa ni'ma rabbu rabbi, Wa ni'ma al-hasbu hasbi, Tansu man tasha, Wa anta al-aziz al-rahim. You know, he calls out, Oh Allah, all the most knowledgeable, all the most uh, 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 kind and gentle, you are our Lord, okay? And you help who you wish to help. And then he says, نَسْأَلُكَ الْعِسْمَةَ فِي الْحَرَقَاتِ وَالسَّكَنَاتِ وَالْكَلِمَاتِ وَالْإِرَادَاتِ وَالْخَطَرَاتِ مِنَ الزُّنُونِ وَالشُّكُوكِ وَالْأَوْهَامِ السَّاطِرَةِ لِلْقُلُوبِ أَمْ مُطَالَعَةِ الْغُرُوبِ this is really the most powerful part of this dua. He says, O oh Lord, we seek your protection from every kind of suspicion, imagination, wild imaginations, doubts, and suspicions. Okay? Whether they are physical, whether they are mental, we seek your protection. And I often have this on my, actually, my business card. Oh Lord, we seek your protection from every kind of suspicion, doubts, because it's these doubts that actually lead to worries. The chronic worry then becomes anxiety. The anxiety then turns into a depress depression that then it leads to many of the psychosomatic illnesses like blood pressure, like heart problems, uh, like even possible cause of diabetes and many other ailments you know, that our society is now sadly riddled with. And it all begins with this you know, psychological problem. And this is a very powerful dua that helps us to overcome this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself faced lots of troubles and problems in his life. And he faced lots of worries as well. And he was very anxious. He was very anxious and worried a lot of the time, actually. And here is one instance, amongst many dozens mentioned in the Quran, one instance where the Prophet is very, very worried. Again, he's been jibed now and mocked at by the non-Muslims in Mecca. The Prophet hasn't received the revelation for several days. And his, his routine was that whenever he received a revelation, he would go out to the kuffar, to the Meccans, and preach to them, tell them, this is what Allah wants you to do, this is what you should be doing, and this is where I, what I'm inviting you to, this is my message, listen to it. But for several days on end, there was no revelation, and the kuffar took an advantage of this and began to jeer him, mock him, and say, Nauzubillah, your shaitan appears to have left you. Nauzubillah. And the Prophet was very hurt by this. And the fact that he hadn't seen Jibreel, he hadn't received the revelation too, was actually worrisome for him. So he's very worried, anxious. And the revelation comes. Wadduha wallayli idha saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala By the brightness of the mid-morning, and the darkness of the night, O Muhammad, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased with you. This surah is a very beautiful example of how to disengage from worries. And it's the Quranic recipe. In fact, psychologists base all their sort of uh, uh, um, remedies for tackling uh, depression and uh, worries on this surah actually I'll, and, and I'll explain that to you in a minute so Allah says by the brightness of the mid-morning 
Who doubts the brightness of the mid-morning after the darkness of the night? It's so bright, beautiful, it's a real thing, you know? And the Quran says, as real as the brightness of the mid-morning is, and as the true and reality is that the night is dark and all covering, your Lord has not forsaken you. Allah has not deserted you. Allah has not left you and isolated you. Nor is he displeased with you. Okay? What a beautiful way of tackling you know, these wrong worries and thoughts. The first thing you need to do is to have this attitude. No. Nothing is wrong. This is not right. This thought is absolutely wrong. Okay? So this is how it's said. Your Lord is not displeased with you. And they said your Lord has deserted you. Allah said, he has not deserted you. It's not like that. In fact, the next it goes on to say, Soon your Lord will give you so much that you will be happy. You will be satisfied. You will be pleased. That is interesting, isn't it? Allah saying, you will be given so much. Okay? And every coming moment of your life is better than the past. Can you just imagine? You know, if a person who's worried is told this, eh? that, you know, your Lord will give you so much, that you will be happy, that every coming moment of your life is going to be better than the past. What a positive thinking this is, eh? And then your Lord will give you so much that you will really be happy. And then the Quran reminds him, Don't you remember that there was a time you were an orphan? You were an orphan. But I made sure that there were people who cared for you. You had no one to look after you. Your mother had died. Your father had died. We made sure that there was someone who took care of you, okay? Didn't we find you lost in the love of our meeting? And we guided you, okay? You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dhalan here doesn't mean actually that you were, uh, you were lost. Lost in terms of not knowing the right path. What it means is, you were wondering in the love of God. That is the proper and the best tr translation of, of it here. It goes well with what is mentioned in Surah Yusuf about the dual of Yaqub Islam. Loving someone also takes you into another world. You were in love with us, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You didn't have time to think about guiding others. Okay? So, we showed you, we gave the revelation to you so that you could guide humanity. And then, Alam yajidka island for Aghna. Didn't we find you poor and made you wealthy and well off? I hope you can see what the Quran is doing here. It is saying, you know, first you need to start thinking positively. Then what you need to remember is your past successes. Your past small successes, but remember them. And when you remember, look, yes, that was a bad time, but I was able to get out of it. That was a bad time and I was able to overcome it. And then finally, you've got to take some action. And what, what is the action that is expected? You know, the Quran says that what we expect from you is that do not repulse the orphans and don't turn away the beggars or those who come to ask you. And talk openly about the favors of Lord on you. The gift that God has blessed you with Talk about them openly, don't hide them. You know, this surah is of course followed by surah in Sharah, which is also about the expansion of the heart, the opening of the mind. And it also has this idea, in Sharah really has this idea of, you know, the worrisome, worries and depressions and anxieties actually constrict your heart and mind. They actually imprison you. And in Sharah is about breaking the cages the prison walls, and getting out, okay? And the next surah is actually all about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed everybody with inshirah, the expansion of the heart and mind. You know, it's 
if you had more time, I would have delved on the meaning of this surah more. But I, I'm really, I want to use this surah to illustrate how the Prophet worried. But the difference between his worry and our worries is that he was able to overcome his worry. And who would give him the comfort? Allah would give him the comfort. And we too need to learn this, that you know, our real trust should be in Allah. And why is worry so detrimental that the, when the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what should we do when we are worried? And he's, he taught them a very beautiful short prayer, which is, he said, well then pray, Allahumma stur awratana, Allahumma stur awratana wa amin raw'atana. O Lord, cover our shortcomings, weaknesses, and deficiencies. And wa amin raw'atana. And make us safe and skewer from those unwanted fears that we have created in our minds, okay? All those worries that we have built up in our mind and monsters that we have created, okay? And that's the, pro you know, that's the point. In worry, we create our own monsters. And here the Prophet is teaching us how we need to come overcome that by saying, Allahumma stur awratana wa amin raw'atana. Very simple, beautiful dua, you know, which we need to remember. And then the Quran says very clearly, you know, you should always... وَلَا تَحِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ The Quran says, don't have wahan, okay? Wahan is this feeling of weakness, of being actually worthless, of being completely down and under, incapable of doing anything, feebleness, frailty. And the Quran says, وَلَا تَحِنُوا Never have that feeling of being hopeless, of not being able to do things. Okay? وَلَا تَحِنُوا And when the Prophet ﷺ was, you know, talking about wahan once, he said, you know, what worries me about you people is there will be a time when people will pounce upon the Ummah of Muhammad, when they will pounce upon the Muslims, other nations, like the hungry person pounces on the dinner table. And the Sahaba asked, why? Is it because we will be small in number? And the Prophet ﷺ answered, no, no, no. You will be very large in number. You will be sadly like the froth on the sea. Abundant. But what is froth? It doesn't have much weight, does it? That is the problem with you. And they will say, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, what will be the reason for this? He said, wahan. He said, it's a very famous hadith. He said, you will have wahan in you. Meaning, you know, you will feel feeble. You will feel fra frail. You will not have the courage to stand up to these worries. Okay? And they then asked, explain this. And he said, what this wahan will be is hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. This would be a result of your love for the dunya, for the world, and your dislike of death and what is to follow. In other words, you will become worldly. You will be in love with these material things. And the, what this does, what material things do to you is create wahan in you, this worry, this delusion, and this self-deception. So I hope you know, we can try to overcome this wahan, this waham, waham. You know, they're very related words. You know, ranjida, parishan kun, Fikr mand ho jana hai, fikr mein doob jana. You know, these are some of the terms that we use in Urdu to describe this mental state of anxiety. And the Quran is telling us, wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antumul aalaun in kuntum mu'mineen. It's interesting, this is mentioned at the time when the Muslims faced the most biggest trial in the history of, in their short history in those days, which was the Ahzab, the Lashkars and the armies that had gathered to destroy the Muslims. And at that moment, the Quran says to them, don't worry, you know, you should stay firm and strong. Anyway, that's a wonderful story in itself. So coming back to Imam Shazli, this wonderful man who's stuck in the middle of Red Sea and can't get in, he's worried as well. But he makes this prayer, and this prayer is now known as Hizb al-Bahr, one of the most powerful prayers. And it's powerful because it tries to overcome our anxieties. And that's what the essence of that prayer is all about, that you should put your trust in God. And the reason why worry is very detrimental is because 
it can eventually lead to a state of kufr, really, where you deny the, the blessings of Allah. You know, you forget, this is the problem with when you're worrisome. You forget all the goodness that is all around you and all the powers that you have in your, in your grasp. You forget all that. And that is why it is so devastating and that is why the Quran keeps on saying that it is something that should never come near you. If it does, then you need to tackle it head on. And how do you do that? Well, by putting the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the message of the Quran. You know, it's teaching us how we should become mutawakkilun, those who put our trust in Allah and not to rely on material things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong enough to face the emotional anxieties and depressions and worries that we may have the way the Prophet ﷺ was taught through, of course, the prayer is, be, is one of those, as we mentioned last week in Surah Al-Ma'arij, when Allah talks about the worrisome people and then says, but the people who pray can be saved from this. That is another disengaging uh, strategy. So prayer, okay, by being patient, by making those du'as, Allahumma stur awratana. And another one is by remembering the stories of the great people, how they overcame their worries. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand these different disengaging strategies so that we may become strong people with faith in Allah and working towards strengthening and developing our morals so we can make that connection with our Lord, come close to Him. Wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.